Ah, Delaware, where our hot dog meat comes in cubes, we pay no sales tax, and it's in fact actually pronounced Wooder. I am in fact a proud Delawarean. You can tell I wasn't born here just by me saying that, but I've lived here since I was a nine-year-old boy. There's a lot of love about the state, and as much as we are going to be dunking on one of the worst corporations operating in Delaware, I genuinely mean that knowing that every single Silicon Valley Cyberpunk 2077 Nightmare Corporation is also incorporated here. I do, in fact, love this state, and will be attempting to keep the oorah Delaware jokes to a minimum. I'm also going to be putting more effort into this video, as you can tell by the editing that I've done, than I do both of my other con- both of my- all my other content, really. So, watch the whole thing, or get sent to the Liminal Space Gulag, otherwise known as the Delaware Digital Video Factory. I've actually been in this place! Nice- nice-ish dude that runs it. They're just only open- during the times when people who actually have jobs are not at work. Apparently old people have a lot of different things that they gotta freaking... Uh, fine. Capano. The Arasaka Corporation's tomato pie-coated ugly stepchild. One of Wilmington's leading gentrifiers, and, the, and one of the most hated landlording companies in the 1980. Capano is the preeminent private landlord and company in Delaware, utilizing the practice of buying out mediocre or low-quality apartment buildings that you know, Wilmington residents usually live in. And then, and this is usually in middle and lower class neighborhoods, evicting everybody over the course of a year, redoing the apartments with shoddy, wake, with <laughs> shoddy fake wood veneers. Post-production, Evan, real quick, I apologize. It's been about three weeks since I wrote this script, and I had forgotten about it, and I'm so autistic it made me laugh. Forget this, I'm a bad YouTuber. Why do you watch me? That would make Little John <laughs> proud. And opening it as a new community. By the way, uh, I'm gonna... I'm already two and a half minutes into this video. I realize that this is not the right photo that was supposed to be shown. This was when I said Little John. It's a reference to a dumbass TikTok trend. Like I said, I'm a bad YouTuber, and I'm not going back and reporting all this shit, so we're just moving on from here. I right, let's, let's go. Evicting everybody and redoing the apartments in Shoddy Wake Veneers that would make Little John, ah, huh? proud. Then opening it as a new community. This is apartments where here they took apartments that were cheap, like a grand for like a multi-bedroom, and then did all that and made it dumped it. Don't worry about it. Charging anywhere between double and triple the original rent price. How do I know this? That's what happened to me! I had a dingy-ass studio apartment with unclean carpets, smoke-stained walls in the middle of Trolley Square of Wilmington, Delaware, and I loved it. Is that this motherfucker? was $625 a month. It was a shoebox, sure, but it was my shoebox. And, uh... Here's uh, my girlfriend talking about how awesome this apartment was. It was really gross. It was like... But the carpet was always kind of, like, greasy. And... The walls, everything was just kind of always, like, covered in grease. And it always smelled just like horrific, like like old food and shit is the best way to describe it. And it was just like really, really gross and small. And there was like dust caked on things because everything was so greasy. And like the shit everywhere. And then the toilet that like wouldn't flush. And then the kitchen that was like so, so small. Like so small. Like I've had closets bigger than my kitchen. My current closet is bigger than your kitchen. My own delusions aside, the apartment was well priced for the area it was in. 
Even if it was fixed up, it should have been at most $800. It was a shoebox, for Christ's sake. Well, in September of 2021, after buying out the apartment earlier in the year from Best uh, Field Properties... I miss this apartment. Hano served me with a 30 days notice with no option to renew unless I paid an extra 500 doubloons. Now, granted, at this point in my life, I needed to get a new apartment or my girlfriend would leave me because of how much that place was a strain on our relationship. It was ostensibly disgusting and I and my inability to clean regularly did not help. But even so, I still resented Capano for putting me in that position in the first place. That apartment today with linoleum gray wood veneer and shoddy build quality runs a smooth 1300 up the road at, again, Park at the Square. They were charging 1800 in 2018, mind you, so this is before the greedflation of the pandemic, for a two and a half, uh, two and, uh, a two and one and a half bedroom, two bathroom apartment that now costs twenty five hundred. Now, granted, that is less than other places we might think of, but it's still a tiny city, you know, with a population of seventy thousand. It's rough. Long and short of it, Panor leeches. Well, landlording broadly is leeching money off of people who can't afford a hundred thousand dollar down payment, but. Capano are certainly in class their own. Do not take my word for it, though. The good folks on Reddit over at r slash Delaware um, gave some testimonies. Let's hear some of them, shall we? My mother-in-law lives in a Capano-built home down by the beach. Following problems that occurred before eight, that occurred before you know eight years ago, HVAC in the attic had a non-tilted drip pan. The ceiling was leaking. Another home that had the HVAC fall through the ceiling. The marble counter was too heavy for the half wall. It had been it had been cracking little by little under the weight. The AC never worked well. Can't go below seventy six in the summer during the day. There's no return vent on one of the bedrooms. Nails constantly pop out of the drywall. Siding falls off. The back deck warped. Crawl space under the house floods when it rains and it has to be pumped out. The bathtub has to be recalked. All the appliances are dog shit. The breaker constantly has to be flipped when the AC is on. And the ceiling fans that came with the house are rated for small rooms, including the one that's supposed to have be to service the entire kitchen slash living area. Don't know if they built my house, but Capano has written on one of my support beams. They absolutely built your house, which is in in which this house and pretty much all the houses around here in the Summer Hill and Salem Woods area have cracked foundations, and water issues. Been searching for a place to rent. Have to move to Delaware in August to start 50-50 custody with my ex-wife. I called Capana Property. The lady I spoke with was like, well, we have two bedroom available. If you move in July 1st, it's sixteen ninety five a month. But if we hold it and you move in August 3rd, uh, it's twenty two twelve a month. That's extortion and should be illegal. I asked her how they figure that they used real page. And I said, oh, the place that got raided by the FBI for essentially overinflating the U.S. rental market? Got it. Quick tangent. I have covered this on one of the news, um, on the high media news TV news updates here on the channel. Um, check it out. It's, or check out wherever you get your pods and stuff. Yeah, the real page stuff is goofy. I know this is a complete divergence. It's, it's a big reason why uh, your rent is so high in the, in the housing market as fuck. They, uh, it's basically... Uh, market collaboration. Totally illegal. They built beach houses on one of the seven locations on Earth that the very rare Bethany Beach Firefly lives. It's only found in Delaware, and they destroyed one of their best locations. They used an environmental consulting company to circumvent laws about developing on wetlands by building on a wooden ear looking thing. I'm surprised they had there haven't been organized protests from environmental groups because it's the only endemic species in Delaware and it very well may go extinct because of the bunch of residential. I wouldn't buy anything they build because if they're willing to work around the one building code, I'm sure they do that for other ones too. They promise to do a lot of things for the people that own homes in, in Legacy in Odessa. It's a 55 and over community and my parents live there. They promised things they were supposed to happen in a certain time frame and it took them years to, to finally do. I know there's still some stuff that they've done wrong, and I've got to get in, but I have to get details from my parents. 
get through. So there's a track record of Capano kind of treating the elder community of shit. After my divorce, while I was house hunting, I lived in a Capana owned apartment. They wouldn't let me tour the actual unit, just the demo. When I got the unit, there was a basketball-sized hole letting in the February air under my kitchen sink. Jesus Christ. I noted it on the move-in form, and they called in for a service request. I hadn't even moved in yet, so I hoped they'd be done before I did. Come August, they show up unannounced and put a sheet of Lou, Wy of Lou Plywood over the hole and leave. Air still coming in from the hole around this eighth of an inch piece of wood. In December, they sent me a notice that my $1,600 apartment would be a $1,900 apartment after lease renewal. Luckily, I had already entered into closing on my new home. When move out time finally came the following February, they tried to keep my entire 1600 deposit because of the hole. They told me to be glad I wasn't charged to replace the stained, ratty, decade-old rag they called a carpet in the unit too. Getting a lawyer and fighting to get it back is more expensive than just eating the cost, so... I guess they won that round, but now I'm living in a larger weather protected place for less money, so I won the war. Fuck upon them. So yeah, economically, they're dog shit. Now, that last one thing I wanted to say is there is a something that was in a lot of these comments, a lot of comments that were not shown, that we haven't touched on this video just yet. The metaphorical uh igloo cooler in the room and that is the abject horror that is the behavior of the capano family starting with this sad ass point dexter this ladies and gentlemen is thomas capano a delaware a, a delaware attorney that was convicted of killing uh what was the nice lady's name Anne marie Feige. Who was his mistress at the time? Yes, obviously, on top of being a murderer, he's also an adulterer. You know, because that's what rich men do when, you know, they have mistresses that become inconvenient. They, if they can't buy them off, they just, I don't know, kill them, because that's what rich men do. Miss Fahey, seen here, uh, wasn't just murdered by Thomas Capato. Him, and I think it was his brother, allegedly? It, uh, allegedly, just as the brother got off, said he didn't know what was going on. Basically, Tom Scapano chopped her up, threw her in an igloo cooler, and tossed her off the Delaware State Bridge into the into, into, into the river. And because he was the last person who saw her before she died, and she disappeared three days before her family reported her, and nobody else saw her, this was the FBI's guy. And unfortunately... All that Capata buddy couldn't save him from getting life in prison. Now, he died, like, over a decade ago, so it doesn't matter anymore. To be fully clear, this was all before my time, and I'm 26, so everything's resolved. She's dead, he's dead, all sad, and I want to use this as a moment to, again, some of the lovely people from r slash Delaware were kind enough to uh, give me some of their horror stories dealing with the Capon family and the, and the company they keep. Now, for context, somebody commented, the Capanos own the Columbus restaurant. If you find, can find anyone who works there, you'll have plenty to talk about. And this person says, I worked there very briefly, including catering Lewis's own family Christmas party. No family dirt, but I can speak on the trashiness of their friends. Yeah. And I'm somebody who says, you know, Friends can be family, like, friends are your family at the end of the day, so, yeah, so, we'll take it. For some reason, only one bathroom was made available for this party, so there was a line the couple before me. Yes, they used it together, left semen in the middle of the bathroom floor. They went away as quickly as it came. Damn, and calling homeboy a quick shot, too? Rough. By the way, I should probably reiterate that the murder of this woman, that the, that the Capano family basically put a shit ton of money trying to cover her death up. I feel like I should probably reiterate that because I was a little blasé with her death in, in that murder, um, which is a little inappropriate on my part, my apologies. But yeah, she, she the, the, the Capano family spent a ton of money and, and spun a ton of favors to try and get this shit covered up and put away. This is basically my experience with them. However, brief, typical rich family. Stressed out parents, always on the go. Their chill children were absolutely shameless. 
I know a guy who went to school with Lewis and said that the irony was is that he was basically every dickhead preppy bully from the every 80s. It was the 80s. Side note, Lewis was the brother that allegedly uh, helped his brother Thomas kill his mistress. I say allegedly to clear myself of uh, just to cover my ass as far as like defamation or shit like that. Like it's just there's a reason why the Associated Press says Donald Trump uh, rode on a plane with alleged child molester Jeffrey Epstein or something. Just like, or, or just, or P. Diddy or whatever. Just insert like person who was prosecuted, who's like a temp, who hasn't been convicted of being, you know, a child molester or whatever. People will go after you for money and stuff, and that's going to be covered by ass. Doesn't mean, allegedly, still think he absolutely didn't knew what was going on. I don't have experience with their real estate, but I do have personal experience with a few members of the family trying to be as kind as possible, and it was a number of years ago, da 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 da, da. But the members of the family, with about two exceptions, uh, I met were not kind people, and frankly, I'd be humiliated to be a member of that family. They seem to feel no shame or embarrassment. Guess being rich is all that matters. I don't know any of them today, and I don't know their current thoughts on any of this or what they're like now. I don't know if this is niche, but in the grand scheme of things, it's probably dumb. There was this huge controversy when I was in school because one of the Kahana brothers wanted to donate a bunch of money to St. Edmunds and to Archmere to name some buildings after his parents. Lots of people threw a fit and it became a huge discussion. This was a while ago, so I might be wrong, but I believe Archmere ended up declining the offer, but St. Edmund took it. They might have found figures thing out, but it was more subtle, but they still accepted the monetary gift on our ranger. This is probably because this has happened back in the early 2000s, and the fact that Louis Capano was still like pretty prominent in leadership at Capano itself, even though he was allegedly helped with the murder of his brother's mistress. I figure for a couple of, like, religious schools, that's kind of a no-go. Ultimately, Capano is a laughably evil corporation. They're the people that and family that run it are notorious for not being nice people. Especially, you know, they, they, it's just stereotypical rich jackassery, so this is typical. Um, but I digress. Um... This video was a long time coming. Uh, I, it, it, I've been meaning to do this. So why am I peeling so much? Never, never, go, never go to the beach. I always put on more sunscreen than you think you need. God, I'm peeling so much. Anyways, uh, Capano are dumb and stupid. We hate them, and they're ruining Delaware and a real estate market. Fuck them. Uh. I'm going to go to pre-recorded Evan now, who's going to do his normal serenade around joining the Discord and giving me money. Bush did lie 9-11. I don't fucking know. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to you want to talk to me outside of this video, outside of live streams, or just be a join the community and be a part of it, you can do so at hivmedia.gg slash Discord. Discord link's there. We'd love to have you. And given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ask, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at hivmedia.gg slash tip. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing, and a dollar a month is a boot to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, and have a great day.